Mermaid Part 38, video 458 of the entire Atomic Ivy MMO series. So we're working on our brush that kind of mirrors radially and bilaterally. And we have the bilateral code stubbed in. So up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B. And so this is completely radial. And if we go to the next mode, we have bilateral, where we're mirroring across the y-axis. And then we also have bilateral, where we're mirroring across the x. I said that wrong. I keep on, you know what? Fucking hell, man. So look, I don't know my right from my left, and I obviously don't know my x-axis from my, my y-axis. So the confusing thing here that always confuses the fuck out of me is that we are mirroring across the y-axis, but that means that we're flipping the x. We're flipping the x internal coordinates of the tiles, but in order to flip the x, we mirror across the y, right? That just confuses me. Confuses me, all right? So then over here, same idea, right? We're mirroring across the x, which means we flip the internal y coordinates. So, or not the internal y coordinates. Well, we're also flipping that, but right? We're inverting our plot. We're mirroring, okay? We're just making a goddamn mirror brush. It, maybe I'm just fucking over explaining this. Like, maybe I'm at loss for words of what's going on, but it should be pretty fucking obvious what I'm doing here, right? Um, now, notice that not only are we mirroring, but the internals of the tiles are also symmetrical. You see this little dot dot dash pattern? Well, once we get across the axis, once we get across this axis, you can see the dot dot dash pattern is on the correct side still. So not only are we mirroring the plot points, but we're also mirroring the internal. So you can see these dot dot dash patterns, they're facing each other, right? So everything is beautiful and mirrored. And as a little review, remember we can also modify our auto tiling flags. So if we want to, we can turn auto tiling completely off, or we can turn it on on only one axis to get like, you know, slats. Right, we can get these kind of vertical slats, or we can flip it around and we can get horizontal slats. Right, we can do we can do a lot of interesting things with this. Anyways, let's get into the code before we waste more time and then can't explain everything in our time allotment. So we're gonna look at all the 458 deltas because we're on video 458. So all these delta markers tell me which video I wrote certain lines of code in. We're gonna review any line that has a 458 in square brackets. In our mermaid function section with an editor put U32 symmetric bilateral isolated. Well, in here, before we even get into here, I should have fucking went up here and highlighted this because I know where I am, but like if you're new and you're just kind of tuning in, I want you to know where you are as well. Everything is very meticulously namespaced and sectioned off. So all of the mermaid functions are going to be in this mermaid function section. So you see that the beginning of a section has this left justification of the system name, and then the end of a section has this right justification of the system name. And it also has double underscores around it, just so that I can go control F and pop to the different sections related for the different systems. So anyways, in the mermaid function section, within our symmetric bilateral isolated code, we have finished the mirroring on the X and Y and kitty corner. The only thing that's missing here is the dense mirroring code. So let's uh, go up here. So we, we did some of the footwork ahead of time, right? We have the we have the input GTX and GTY, the global tile coordinate. We want to convert that to local, and that's what's going on here. So this is our global tile cord object. Here's our output local tile cord object. And the next thing we want to do is some common code. So this is the this common code is some setup code, and it's also the first plot point, which is the non-transformed plot point. So right here, this is the non-transformed plot point being loaded into our tile buffer of local tile X, local tile Y, and then the actual binary tile value. So this is the non-transform point we're loading into the first index. And right here, we want to know what the lateral span of the level is. And the lateral span of the level will change depending on 
what tile size we're on. So we're going to take the inputted tile size and we're going to get it out the lateral span. So if the tile size is zero, then we're at the smallest size tile. So this lateral span will be 64. If we're using the 2x tile, the lateral span will be 32, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if we use tile size six, which is the largest size, because zero to six is seven values, tile size exponent seven, and seven stands for a capacity of seven values. If we use six here, that's the largest tile size. The lateral span will be one because it's the tile the size of the entire level, and therefore the only address it can have is zero comma zero on a one by one tile map. The max index is the maximum valid address, and because we start counting at zero, it's gonna be the lateral span minus one. We're going to shift out the x y and d bits, the x, y, and d bits from the x, y, d bit field that was passed into this function. So this input x, y, d. These bits are in the position are uh, relative to how the variable is worded. So it's x first, then it's y, then it's d. So the d is in the least significant bit position, the x is in the most significant bit position, and that's why we're shifting by two, one, and zero, and then masking out with a binary one to get these individual bits. So these are setting flags telling us how to do our mirroring operations. Do we want to mirror across the x? Sorry, do we want to mirror the internals? Do, do we want to mirror the x? Uh, do we want to mirror the x coordinate? Do we want to mirror the y coordinate? And do we want to mirror the do dense mirroring. So when we, this is mirroring across the y axis, this is mirroring across the x axis. It's all topsy turvy. This flag means to modify the x axis value of our tile. The x, modify the x component of our plot point. Modify the y component of our plot point. So this is mirroring across the y, mirroring across the x, and do we want to do the dense mirroring code? So once again, uh, this is the object local tile chord member local tile x local tile y. This is the original input point that was passed in here, but it's been localized. So this is global tile x, global tile y, and we're converting that to local uh, down here, right? We, we, we load in the variables we need to load into our global tile coordinate object, and then we convert the global to local here. And then we load it in as the first, the first tile in our tile buffer. The length of our tile buffer is one, and the loading index is zero, because, right, we loaded at zero, and the length is one because we have one element in it. So we're gonna set this because we're gonna need to modify these two values as we load more tiles into our tile buffer. Mirror internals. We can either mirror the internals of our auto tiles, or we can't, and what the fuck does that mean? Let's go back to, um, aim kanji web web url let's let's go back to the application really quick and show you what i'm talking about when i'm talking about mirroring internals because i think it's important that you know what that what does that mean now i know i've described it in other videos but let's describe it here so let's go to i one of our bilaterals and let's go up up down down left right left right b now i think i already explained that the internals were being mirrored and i got to say that looks that looks fucking wrong. Um, why is that wrong? It's... Okay, let's go to the other axis. Maybe it's correct on the other axis. Okay, it's correct on this axis. On this axis, we're mirroring the internals correctly, but on the other axis, we're not. You see how this has been flipped? But it hasn't been flipped. Oh, no, 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 it is correct here. It is correct here. See, I see the little highlight. It's harder to notice the symmetry here. But there's a little edge highlight on this side, and the edge highlight is on this side, too. Okay, so that's actually correct. We are mirroring the internals correctly. So let's go up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B. Let's show you the difference. So here we're mirroring the internals, and you can see how these are kind of mirror images of each other. If we turn mirroring of internals off, you'll see that now this latches together. It latches together because when we cross the axis line, we don't change the internal auto-tiling values. There's benefits and drawbacks to both, so it's just up to how you, how would you like to design things? So use whichever mode works for you for how you want to design things. And by the way, that's the N key. The N key is turning on and off the mirroring of the internals. Okay, so let's go back here.
So mirroring of the internals. If our editor, so we have a shorthand reference to our Eddie game editor object. And if our editor says that we want to mirror the internals, so this is our mirroring of internals flag. So AM6 stands for auto tiling method, six bits, and MIR is for mirror. So we're going to just take this and we're going to grab it from here. We're making a shorthand alias here. And so this stands for editor mode mirror AM6. AM6 standing for auto tiling methods six bits. So if mirroring is turned on, we're going to grab a function pointer to a function that will actually mirror the internals of our binary tile. It's going to take mirror bit X, mirror bit Y, and spit out a transformed version of our binary tile. If mirroring is turned off, so if we're in this else branch, then we're going to use this version of the mirroring function, which is just a no-op. So this is ignored bit X and ignored bit Y. And when we give this a binary tile value, it just does not transform. It just spits out the original value. This right here is our function pointer, right? This is our function pointer. That's why it's all capitals, because capitals are for functions. Lower cases are for data. So this is the mirroring internal section. Okay, down here, we have three sections. We have the non-dense kitty corner, the non-dense axis X, and the non-dense axis Y. And the kitty corner is only going to be used when we're mirroring both on the X and Y axis here. So you can see both the X and Y bit has been set. We're going to increment the length of our tile buffer, incre increment our loading index, and we are going to flip the X and Y coordinate here and load it into the next slot in our tile buffer. And we're also going to use our mirroring function. We're going to give it the original tile, and we're going to mirror on the X and the Y. So we're saying one for both for the X and Y bits. For mirroring just the internals of the X, or mirroring the X plot point. We're mirroring the X component of our plot point, right? The X bit is set. Once again, we're going to increment, we're going to increase the length of our paired array, increase the loading index, which is used here. And we're going to flip just the X here, but we're going to keep the Y the same. And then we're going to flip the, um, we're going to flip the X. Okay, yeah, we're going to flip the X bit, but not the Y bit. And then down here, same idea but the Y axis. So if the Y bit is set, we want to mirror the Y component of our coordinate. We're going to get the, we're going to increment, we're going to increment the size of our paired array. We're going to increment the loading index. And here's our loading index for our tile buffer. We're going to mirror just the Y component here. So you see we flip the Y using the max address minus the current address. So flipping that around, inverting it, but keeping the X the same to just flip it, uh, flip it across the X axis, basically, right? We modify the Y to flip it across the X axis. And then for the bits, since we modified the Y plot point, we also have to mirror the internals of the tile, of the internals of the tile, so that everything remains completely symmetrical. And then once we're done with our plotting, right, we've loaded everything into these paired arrays. These are our tile buffers. Once we've loaded everything into our tile buffers, down here, we're going to unload our bilaterally mirrored tile buffer. GTX and GTY are for global tile X and global tile Y. B32 is for our binary tile, but this is just a more generic variable name. B32 just means binary and 32 bits. We're going to repurpose our max index. So rather than this max index being the lateral span minus one, it's going to be the max index for our tile buffer. And we're going to iterate through our tile buffer. We're going to reuse this variable as well, just to keep things consistent and easy to read. And we're going to unload our tile buffer into local tile X and local tile Y of our object local tile coordinate object. And we're going to unload the binary tile value into B32 here, right? Because this is just a coordinate. It does not contain the actual tile value. So we have to have a separate variable for this component of our paired array. We're going to convert the local to global and then store the member global tile X, global tile Y, and GTX, GTY. And then we're going to do our regular plotting right here. The tile size, the layer, global tile X, global tile Y, and our binary tile. Here's what we did previously. Here's our footnotes. Here's what we did in this video. If you want a longer explanation, you will have to go here. You are on the advanced playlist. This is the technical demos playlist. Source code is here. You can email me here. Like and subscribe. I am Kanji Coder.